Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Taya and this is Taya's Turning Pages. Mm -hmm. video you can tell that this is going to be my black history month recommendations as well as my blackathon tbr slash hopefuls and i'm really excited to film this video guys i can't believe that february is almost here and i actually started my booktube journey back in july so this will be my first year participating in themed reading like this so i'm really really excited about that but before we get started with today's video i just wanted to say please make sure you like comment and subscribe it really helps me and my channel out and please make sure you follow me on bookstagram as well as storygraph i always leave that information linked down below as well as at the end of the video before we get started with the actual recommendations I did want to note that these books aren't actual like nonfiction Black History Month books or anything along those lines I do have one but for the most part a lot of these um, books are mostly just like fiction and stories and I just really wanted to shed light on some of these books because I feel like they're not getting the proper praise or hype that they deserve um, now some of them are pretty popular and they have been going around you know bookstagram and booktube and booktok but so like I said most of these are fictional stories so just please keep that in mind all of that out of the way let's get started first book recommendation that I have here is The Black Kids by Christina Hammonds Reed so I actually read this book last year and this made it onto my top 10 favorite books of 2021 list and I absolutely adored this story and I still do. So this follows a young black girl named Ashley in 1992 I'm pretty sure and she attends this predominantly white school and she normally hangs out with the white kids at this school but there are a group of black kids that she always kind of looks at and always wishes that she could hang out with them but she's worried about what other people might think if she's always hanging around other black kids and she's also just afraid that they might not accept her because she never hangs out with them any other time so she's dealing with all of those internal struggles and she's also very privileged and very shelter so she doesn't really understand the full scope of what black people have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and one day LA is plunged into turmoil because the Rodney King verdict came out and the police officers that were responsible for the beating of Rodney King were acquitted and let off so, so this of course did trigger a negative response from people specifically the black community in LA and there were riots and protests and everything like that happening in response to that verdict and Ashley finds herself plunged into the middle of it with another character in here who is also her love interest named LaShawn and you just get to see them navigating this new reality but you also see Ashley coming of age as well as just reckoning with her race, her identity, and her culture and what that means to her. I rated this book a five out of five stars. It made my favorites list for a reason. I thought that this was a phenomenal book. Even though it is YA, I think anybody that picks it up could take something away from it. It doesn't matter how old you are. Christina Hammonds Reed did a phenomenal job at really showcasing how black people are not a monolith and that we're all just trying our best to be and exist in this world. So I really appreciated this book. I thought that this was a phenomenal novel. And again, I think anybody that picks this up can learn something from it. Just so many important discussions in here that explore race, class, identity, and culture as well as just falling in love along the way but also so understanding every part of history I feel like we don't really hear too many stories um, or have a lot of articles or just a lot of information when it comes to the LA riots yes there are of course a lot of sources and articles out there but I just feel like compared to other events that have happened um, we don't really talk about it as much as we should in my opinion so I really like how this book took a different approach and focuses on the LA riots because that was very devastating for LA as well as the black community so I really love this book I can't recommend it enough and even though it's YA I think everybody can learn something from this one the next book recommendation that I have here is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. For those of you who do not know, Angie Thomas is one of my favorite authors of all time and The Hate You Give is one of my favorite books of all time. I have never felt more seen than when I read The Hate You Give and recognized Star as a character. I loved how she was trying to navigate both worlds because that is a reality for so many black people and <laughs> it just made me feel seen. So when I found out that she was coming out with a prequel to The Hate You Give that will follow Star's father Maverick, I knew I was going to pick it up right away and as you guys can see I got the sign edition because I just love Angie Thomas so much. So this one like I said follows Star's father Maverick and you really just get to see what life was like for him growing up and how he became the man who he became. So this book was phenomenal. I also included this in my uh, top 10 favorites books of 2021 list but this made it into the honorable mention category but it was still a great book nonetheless. This really explores black boyhood and manhood in such a profound and powerful way in my opinion. Um, I don't know how Angie Thomas did it but she always does it and she always does it well when it comes to creating great characters and really making the reader feel a connection to them. So this one just follows like I said Maverick's journey and you really get to see how hard life was for him and how he 
really beat a lot of odds and statistics and did what he had to do to again become the man that he became in the hate you give universe so i just think that this is a really great book that has a lot of important discussions in it as well about black boyhood and manhood and toxic masculinity and being a father and trying to raise a child in maybe not the most ideal situation or environment so yeah definitely recommend this one so the next book that i have here is rise to the sun by leah johnson so i read this book back in the summertime and i enjoyed this one i did give this a four out of five stars there there were some things about it that didn't really sit well with me and I don't want to get into them because it will be a spoiler I feel like in a way but there are some things in here that just kind of made me side eye a little bit but for the most part I really did enjoy this book and I really liked reading about these two characters so this follows two young girls named Olivia and Tony and they couldn't be any more different Olivia is very bubbly and very outgoing and Tony is very reserved and pretty standoffish but they meet at this music festival that takes course over the next three days and you just get to follow them and their other two friends get up to shenanigans and adventures like most people or kids would do when they're at a concert or a music festival so like I said I rated this one four to five stars I thought it was really cute. I thought it was just such an interesting novel. Um, this is a sapphic novel. It does have those important discussions, of course, when it comes to LGBTQ plus um, representation, as well as just, you know, black girl representation too. I think Leah Johnson did a great job at the atmospheric tone in this book. I loved how she was able to capture the mood and the feeling of a music festival or a concert if you've ever been to one you know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to the excitement and the joy and the buzzing energy when it comes to these type of concerts and festivals and Leah Johnson captured that perfectly in this book I literally felt as though I was at like Coachella or a Beyonce concert or something along those lines because of how immersive and engaging her writing really was in this book I know Leah Johnson also wrote you should see me in a crown I have not read that yet I do plan on picking that up at some point this was my first introduction into her work and I wasn't disappointed again I thought this this was a cute read but there are some things in here that again I wasn't really 100% on board with so definitely look up trigger warnings um there are quite a few in here this does deal with grief and the loss of a parent and also just PTSD and things along those lines so please make sure you look up trigger warnings but I still wanted to recommend this because it was cute and for the most part and I just really loved these two characters so so much I really loved Olivia second to last book that I have here is a horror novel and it is when the reckoning comes by Latanya McQueen so I read this one last year I don't remember the month I want to say it was maybe during Halloween but I'm not 100% sure but this is a story that follows a young black woman named Mira who has left her segregated hometown when she was still pretty young and she decides to return back to this hometown because one of her old childhood friends a white woman named Celine is actually getting married so Mira wants to go back to her hometown to try to rekindle you know her friendship with Celine as well as rekindle her friendship with this other boy that they were both friends with named Jesse and so Mira decides to go but once she arrives there she realizes that Celine is having her wedding on this plantation and this plantation has been transformed into this weird vacation resort type of destination and there's reenactments there is an all-black staff and they do these reenactments as you know enslaved people and um, domestic workers and things along those lines so Mira of course naturally is very disturbed by the entire situation but she wants to be there for Celine and she really wants to try to figure out you know where their friendship went wrong and if they can try to rekindle it but as the days wear on Mira starts to notice that there are weird and creepy things happening and certain things that she can't explain and the story pretty much derails and takes a sinister turn because the ghosts of the enslaved people on this plantation enact their revenge on Celine and the rest of her guests so i.e when the reckoning comes this book was a five out of five stars easy five out of five stars this is a debut and I just don't even understand how Latanya McQueen was able to come out the gate swinging with this one this was so good especially for a debut novel and I hope she continues to write more stories because this one was amazing it was everything and more I was genuinely terrified at some of the things that Mira experienced because there are there are paranormal aspects that do coincide with the literary and the literal fear and horror that goes into this novel but some of those paranormal things and scenes that happen in this book really shook me to my core and made me not want to go to sleep so if you are into horror and you're into you know a good scare i definitely recommend picking up this book this also just touches on so many important issues of course and you know latani mcqueen really reiterates the fact that history will repeat itself if we refuse to acknowledge it or reckon with it and i thought that this was a really great reminder to all of us to never forget the past never forget those who were enslaved because they deserve to be remembered so yeah i definitely recommend picking up this novel if you can handle it there are trigger 
warnings, a lot of trigger warnings in this book. So please make sure you look those up. I always leave the trigger warning database in my description box. So look them up because there are a lot, there are a lot of gruesome and gnarly scenes in here, especially towards the end. But I was able to bypass them for the most part and I still enjoyed the story for what it was. The last book that I have here is a nonfiction and it is Hood Feminism Notes from the Women That a Movement Forgot by Mickey Kendall. So this book was actually really interesting. I read this last year and it's just a collection of essays and notes and facts from Mickey Kendall and this pretty much just talks about how white and mainstream feminism tends to leave out black women and other women of color when it comes to feminist agendas. So this book really dives into how in systemic policies and practices and misogyny and the patriarchy and all of that affects black women a lot differently than other groups, specifically white women. So, so this book just goes into more detail about the sexualization of black girls and women. It also talks about how gun violence affects black women and girls differently compared to other groups, um, hunger, housing and redlining and also just reproductive rights in general and how black women face higher rates of mortality when it comes to you know delivering and and the birth and complications throughout pregnancy and you know not being believed medical racism all of that is really wrapped up in here and i thought this was a really informative book i enjoyed it i did rate it a four to five stars and that's only because i knew this and i don't want to sound braggadocious or pretentious but as a black woman living this experience every single day i much knew everything that was in this book and i really agreed with everything Key kendall talked about in here um so i think that this is a great book for non-black people or people that are just interested in learning more about intersectional feminism and how they can be an active ally so if you are interested in all of that i definitely recommend picking up this book but yeah i thought it was great those are all of the books that i wanted to recommend for black history month now moving on to my blackathon tbr slash hopefuls so like i said i will be participating in blackathon 2022 this year and for those of you who do not know this is a month-long read-along um, that pretty much just encourages you to read diverse books specifically books written by black authors that feature black characters etc this read-along is hosted by none other than jesse from bow ties and books who is one of my favorite people here on the internet i love their content so much and they like i said are one of my favorite people on here so um i will leave their information as well as the co-host information down below please make sure you check them out especially jesse because their content is so good and i just ugh, i love them and their channel. <laughs> I will be looking at my phone and my iPad because I have all of my notes here that are related to the Blackathon and there are different teams and prompts. So getting into the specifics, there are four different teams and one of the teams is Team Science Fiction and Fantasy. The other team is Team Thriller, Horror, Mystery. The other team is Team Literature, Contemporary, and Nonfiction. And the last team is Team Romance. So I had to sit on this for a bit because I really didn't know which one I wanted to join. I was going back and forth on a few, but I decided to stick with Team Romance because I read a lot of thrillers and nonfiction books these past couple of weeks and I kind of just wanted to break it up and get into some romance. So I said, why not? We're gonna join that. So there are three prompts for Team Romance that you have to follow. And the first prompt is a book that explores the duality of love and hate. So this was pretty hard for me because I feel like I read pretty much every book that features a black enemies to lovers situation and I just couldn't find really any more but I was searching on bookstagram and I did find one book that is getting a little bit of hype in the community and it is called Everybody Ain't Your Friend an urban romance thriller by Tanisha Stewart so this is actually pretty interesting because I don't know the full synopsis but I'm pretty sure this follows a girl who is dating this guy and they're in a very toxic relationship but of course they can't stay away from each other and then one day I think something happens where they finally do break up but then the main character starts to receive threatening calls she feels like people or someone is starting to follow her and I think she suspects that is her ex-boyfriend but then another guy gets thrown into the mix and then like things take off from there so I feel like I am kind of reaching for the stars here I feel like I'm stretching this one a bit so Jesse if you're watching this just ignore it but this one I'm gonna make fit for this prompt because it does have a love to hate situation because a toxic relationship they love that person but they also hate that person at the same time etc so I feel like it fits and we're gonna make it work but that is the book that I will be reading for this prompt the next prompt here is a book with a romance between two black people so this one is easy because this is actually one of my book club picks and I actually picked this for the book club that I'm a part of and it is seven days in June by Tia Williams so I'm literally knocking out two birds with one stone here and I'm really happy about that you guys know if you've been watching my videos for the past couple of weeks I have been talking about this book and saying that I wanted to read this this year it is finally the time to do so in February 
February and I'm really excited. I'm not going to get into the synopsis because I feel like I have talked about this book enough in my other videos so I will leave those linked down below or up above in the cards but yes I'm finally reading Seven Days in June by Tia Williams and I cannot wait to dive into this one. I feel like this is going to be very hard hitting and very profound and I think Tia Williams is going to be one of those authors that I keep on my radar and that I'm always going to look forward to when it comes to new books. I know pretty bold that I'm saying that and I haven't even read this yet but I just feel it. I feel it in my bones you know. <laughs> last prompt here is a book that has a book on the cover so this was actually pretty difficult for me too <laughs> because I just started really building up my bookshelves this past summer so I don't have as many books as I would like but I did find one book on my shelf that actually has a book on the cover and it does feature black people and black stories so it just fit the prompt perfectly and it is called well read black girl finding our stories discovering ourselves by glory edom and i just love this cover like look at that that is gorgeous i actually picked this up from target i want to say two years ago at this point and i have not read it yet i'm not the biggest short stories person i don't know what it is but they're just like not my thing but i really wanted to give this one a try read blackout this past summer that has all of the you know prominent black authors that we know like Tiffany D. Jackson, Angie Thomas, Nicola Yoon, etc. And I really really enjoyed that. I thought it was a really cute book and so why not give this one a try and see if I can really get into short stories. Maybe this will be another book that falls into that category that Blackout did. But yeah I'm really excited about this one. Like the little subtitle here said it's just a collection of short stories about black women and black girls discovering themselves I think through reading and just through life in general. So yeah to give this one a read and then share my thoughts with you guys in my February wrap up. So the last prompt on here is the group book and so this is the book that everybody on team romance has to read and it is the sweetest remedy by jane e caro now y'all know if you watch my videos that this was a book that i dnf'd and that i refused to return to just because i didn't personally agree with a lot of the things that were included in the book so i will not be participating in the group book read but i am going to read the book club pick or the group pick for teen literature contemporary nonfiction, and it is black girls must die exhausted by jane allen now i wanted to read this book for a long time so i'm going to actually go with this book as my like group pick but i will be submitting my information for teen romance because those are the books that i'm mostly reading so i just wanted to quickly say that because y'all know I did not like that book if you watch my other videos and I do not plan on returning to it so yes <laughs> I just had to say that so now moving on to my hopefuls for the month now please keep in mind that I probably won't get to all of these which is why they are called hopefuls but I do hope to sprinkle some of these in between the blackathon books that I'm reading I don't want to read all of those back to back to back so I would like to sprinkle some of these in between those reads but we will see how this goes other thing is I probably won't go into the full synopsis for each and every one of these um, hopefuls if you are interested in learning more I definitely recommend just going on goodreads or google and just looking up the synopsis there but for the sake of time I will just be flying through these and giving like some of my thoughts so the first book that I have here is Beloved by Toni Morrison and I've actually had this book on my bookshelf for a long time at this point this is the only um, Toni Morrison book that I actually own I do plan on reading and owning her other books so the Song of Solomon Sula and I think the bluest eye and then of course Beloved are her most like notable works I'm pretty sure but the only one that I have right now is Beloved and this one I don't know too much about I've heard people say that this is like a horror novel but then I've heard people say it's not really a horror novel it just has horrific elements involved in it because it does involve a young woman who I think was enslaved and she is pregnant or she has a child and something really tragic happens to I think both of them or one of them I'm not 100% sure but I heard that this is a really sad story nonetheless and I am very nervous going into it but I need to read some Toni Morrison because it's a crime that I haven't read anything by Toni Morrison before so yeah this is going to be one of the first books that I read from her I'm still debating between this one and the bluest eye but I think I'm going to pick up this one just because I already have the physical copy but yes really excited to read this one sometime soon so the next book that I have here is their eyes were watching God by Zora Neale Hurston and this edition is stunning I absolutely love this I actually picked this up from Target and it is there if it will focus Okay, there we go. <laughs> so I actually picked this up from Target and this is their 75th um, edition. And this one I don't know too much about. I wanna say it's a coming of age story. Um, and it also might be literary fiction. I'm not 100% sure. I am going into this not knowing too much. But on the back here, there is a quote and it says, Janie saw her life like a green tree and leaf with the things suffered, things enjoyed, things done and undone. Dawn and doom was in the branches. That sounds really beautiful. So yes, I cannot wait to read this one. I have been wanting to read something by Zora Neale Hurston for years at this point. And she also came out with this one book called The Last Black Cargo. And I think that book follows a man who was enslaved and he actually remembered a lot of 
you know the events that took place while he was enslaved and he recounts his life to Zora Neale Hurston and she compiles it in a book and I think it's called The Last Black Cargo. If not I will leave a picture of it up on the screen here so that way you guys can see what I'm talking about but yes I'm going to start with this one and then I'm more than likely going to move on to that one but I can't wait to give Zora Neale Hurston a try. I've heard so many people praise her and there's also a quote on here by Alice Walker and it says there is no book more important to me than this one. So yeah that quote really made me want to pick this up because that's how you know this book is probably really poignant and really profound and really inspiring and I need to give it a read and see what it's giving. I'm sorry if you guys hear any noise in the background it is snowing where I'm from and there are a lot of plow trucks out here so just ignore that we're almost done but the last physical book that I have here for for my hopefuls is The Other Black Girl by Zakia Delilah Harris so I feel like this one really needs no introduction because so many people have already read this book and talked about it. This is definitely a polarizing book you either love this or you hate it. I know that this is a thriller but then I've heard people say that this is more so mystery and suspense. Either way I love both of those genres so it doesn't matter to me but I have been putting this one off because I know that this deals with a lot of microaggressions in the workplace as well as just being the only black person in the office or a predominantly white setting so that triggers me because I have been there multiple times throughout my career and so I have been putting this off for that very reason but I need to just pick this up and read it because I want to form my own opinion on it since this is such a polarizing book I want to see where I fall in the spectrum and go from there I really don't know like much else about this book except for the fact that this does follow a young black woman who is the only black woman in her office and then another black woman comes along and then sinister and creepy things start happening. So yeah, this just sounds like it is going to be really good. I really hope I'm one of the few that enjoys it. I really really hope so because I do have high expectations for this book and I probably should lower them since I've seen nothing but like negative reviews but oh well we're still gonna we're still gonna go in with high expectations and hope for the best. <laughs> And the last book that I have here, I don't physically have it, but I do plan on getting it very soon. And it is The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois by Honoré Fanon Jeffers. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that, but I have seen so many people talk about this book up and down, up and down my TL on um, Bookstagram. Everyone that has read this has praised it. And I'm like shocked at how many people finish this book and finish it so quickly because this is a behemoth of a book. This is about like 800 and something pages, 879 pages. So I already know I'm not going to finish this, of course, in the month of February. Um, I do want to at least start it and, you know, get the ball rolling here. But this is probably going to be a year long read for me because there are just so many other books that I really want to read. And I don't like to dedicate my time to just one book. I like to read multiple books. I know that sounds very chaotic and unhinged, but that's how I do things. So that way I can like meet my goals and like get through these books, you know. So I don't know how I'm going to incorporate this into my monthly reading plans, but I would like to try to read maybe like a chapter a night or a chapter a day, something along those lines. But yeah, I've heard nothing but great things about this one. I think this does follow a family. Yeah, right here it says, this explores the history of an African-American family in the American South from the time before the American Civil War and slavery through the civil rights movement to the present. So this is going to be very hard hitting, very heartfelt, or there are going to be a lot of triggering things in this one. I'm really excited for it nonetheless because Honoré has been getting so much praise for this book. It does have a 4.6 um, out of 5 star rating on Goodreads, which is really good. So yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to see what this book is all about and if I'm going to finish it before 2022 is over. Right y'all, those are all of the books that I wanted to recommend for Black History Month as well as my Blackathon TBR and the hopefuls that I hope to get to throughout the month of February. Now please keep in mind that these are not the only books that I will read for February. I am participating in Kayla slash Books and Lala's Buzzword Readathon as well as Mary from Mary Among Stories Bronte Along and I just want to incorporate a few other books that are not related to this TBR throughout the month just because like I have a lot of thrillers and romances that I would like to get to as well so yes there will be a mixture or, or a hodgepodge of books in my February wrap up so stay tuned for that but I hope you guys enjoyed this video please make sure you like comment and subscribe like I mentioned earlier as well as follow me on bookstagram and storygraph and lastly if you're able to take away some gems and some recs from this video let me know down below if you plan on reading any of these books and if you're participating in the blackathon this year I would love to know all right well I hope to see you guys in my next video bye mm -hmm.